Welcome to another Sales Wisdom Pod with Ryan Arcoracci or Arcoracci or Arcoraci. Yeah. With perfect. The, you got it. Yeah, Italian. Very Italian. Sounds yeah. like uh, Amoretti, one of my favorite beers. And you make me want to have, what do they call these rice balls? Rice balls. Yeah, uh. these rice balls that are like uh, fried arancini. Mm. Oh, okay. That is straight delicious. Do you like those, Ryan? I've never had them, but it sounds oh, good. You've never <laughs> yeah. had an arancini? No. Okay, so you no. need to door dash one okay. right now. Um, All right. Yeah, it's it's rice. It's covered. Um, it's it's fried, okay, and it's covered in a bolognese uh, sauce. Sauce um, bolognese. Uh, forgot how do you call that in in American. And inside there's inside that rice ball there's cheese mozzarella, mm -hmm. and it's yeah it's just the most delicious thing ever. Um, my first two jobs were in Italian restaurants, so. I had the privilege of eating lots of those and tiramisus and uh, artisanal pizza and pasta and everything in between. Ryan, welcome to the pod. Um, guys and gals that are listening, Ryan has his own podcast. It's called Business Stories. Uh, he's host and producer of that Yep. in Las Vegas, Nevada, um, which I went a year and a half ago. And yeah, we're going to talk about franchises we're going to talk about tech sales uh podcasting itself and business stories because ryan has a lot of those so yeah ryan can you introduce yourself tell us a bit more about what you're into nowadays sure i mean i'm into all things technology one of the things i found myself doing a lot working with clients is helping them figure out ideas to challenges you know they have whether it's in sales and marketing uh whatever kind of business you're in there's always a challenge in some way. So a lot of times you just need to be a little innovative to figure out how to solve those challenges and um, become successful. So I enjoy giving people ideas and just really helping them succeed using technology, whether it's your website, whether it's sales technology, whatever it is, I enjoy helping people succeed in that area. So thanks for having me, Charles. It's, it's great Pleasure. to be here. Your pod, why did you start it? What was the premise? And did you reach these goals that you set for yourself for the podcast? I really didn't have goals setting the and starting the podcast. I uh, I simply wanted to just start to create content and really learn from people. Everybody I talk to on the podcast, doesn't matter who they are, or where they come from. Everybody has an interesting story uh, to tell um, to, for where they, how they've got to where they are, whether they're a CEO, founder, business owner, small business owner, doesn't matter. Everybody's got a really good story. And I learned from everybody I work and talk to. So um, that was really it. I, I it's, it's grown. We've got over 60,000 downloads and I'm excited. It's, it's a lot of fun doing it. Uh, and the best part about it is just meeting people and learning from people. So uh, yeah, it's great. You also worked at Blind Tether, which is quite interesting. So it's like automating your franchise business. I want to talk uh, about yeah. franchise models. So I started my podcasting agency not so long ago to help folks start their pods, scale their pods, be invited to podcasts, find sponsors. You know, we're not yeah. the production agency, right? I couldn't give a crap about editing stuff. You know, I have zero interest for that. I will get interest. Uh, for that, probably not for other clients, but mostly for my own videos. But that's another story. The point is that on uh, this agency, uh, on, with with this agency, the model that I'm trying to A/B test right now is franchising my whole blueprint mm -hmm. of how to start um, a podcast uh, that mm -hmm. could bring you 75 leads per week, because that's mm -hmm. the amount of folks that I speak on a weekly basis. Obviously, it's not just lead, right? You can learn from podcasting. Uh, you can connect with people that, and you can do business with them like 30 years later with podcasting. Yeah. It's just like such a nice front door. But right. the point is people are focused on cash, right? Especially when yeah. you sell, it's like invest cash in me and I'll grow that cash like two to 10 X. Point is if I share them my full system of how to generate these leads and start their own podcasting agency. My feeling is that I give them a crap ton of value 
-hmm. I share them my full bl blueprint and I can potentially have them start a podcasting agency that will generate a million in one year. Mm -hmm. And because of that, be because normally my podcasting agency, we start at 1.5K a month. That That's like probably not the value they would get if I just share my full blueprint, if I spend time with them and so forth. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do a franchising model. I'm yeah. going to charge 100K. Uh, it's going to be 10K a month, right? Um, so 100-ish K, 120 to be precise. I'm going to spend time with you. I'm going to share like all my blueprints. You're going to have direct access to my brain. You don't necessarily need to follow my brand, but uh, I might want to discuss that with you because I think that's the point of franchising. But the point, it's sort of a, a license. So maybe I'm mistaking the franchising and, and licensing model. But the point is I would constantly accompany them. I would take charge of uh, their marketing. I could mm -hmm. potentially even take charge of the outreach for them and they only do the podcast. So as you can see, it's like, it, it's a confusing ball uh, of, con yeah, of mess here. Um, yeah. What do you think about that? Do you think I'm mistaking franchises with licensing? Should I keep my brand? And like, if I franchise them, would it be the greatest advantage that I actually book in their calendar, the podcast for them? Or should I just teach them how to do it? Like, what would you do here? I think you have to look at like the structure of it and how ideally you want it to be structured. It sounds like you have a little bit of a structure, but it's not solidified, right? So you want to really map it out and say, and I'm not a lawyer. So, you know, there's franchising inv involves law. So there's fran there's law, there there's laws you have to follow to become a franchisor. There's compliance you have to follow. Uh, there's money involved. Licensing is a different animal. So, it, you know, you might be more on the side of licensing for all I know, but I think before you can decide which side to go on, you need to look at how do you ideally want it to work um, because you could get in a situation where you do have someone who's a licensee or a franchisee and they end up relying on you a lot and it becomes less self-sufficient for them. And you're more the it's kind of the parent child relationship where you're kind of guiding them. Now that's going to be a lot of work for you. So you have to decide whether do I want to create a, a system that they can utilize and run themselves or do I want to help them? And if you're on the side of helping them, then you're going to put a lot of the onus on you and a lot of the responsibility on you, which is going to take up a lot of your time. And also they're going to be coming to you for a lot too. So um, I think the best thing you could do, Charles, is think about it in terms of how you want it structured to fit you and help you and help them at the same time without consuming too much of your time um, in that structure. I hope that helps you. Right. Well, as a bit of thinking here live on the pod. So the premise was if I share all my systems with you, because you know, the 1.5 K a month, it's like you already have your pod or you want help to start your pod. Well, I could coach you into it. I can share some of my system. My time is limited though. So it's like, yeah, we're not, yeah. we're not like hyper connected to one another. Hence why you paid this minimal sum. Right. I can also do it for you for a, a tad higher price. I could book meetings for you. Um, that's less time with me. It's not me sharing my full blueprint. The premise is that if I share my full blueprint and also teach you how to start your own agency, which is exactly what I'm doing, you should pay more because you can derive huge value out of that. Right. Now, um, the challenge with this, that not a lot of people have 10 K to invest a month and want to actually start their own podcast agencies. A lot of folks, they don't even believe in uh podcasting you know it's like oh is that still a joe rogan hobby and i have yeah. one in a trillion chance of getting rich with that yeah. um so that's the challenge so maybe instead what i should do and that i think would follow more the, the franchiser model is is go with the low fee 1.5 but ask that they use my brand which is podbuyer.com mm -hmm. or some other brands that i could put so that i could get more visibility Mm -hmm. I would book the podcast because I think that's the headache part. I mean, it's really powerful if you know like my full system of how to book like all of these guests, but I think most people don't give a crap and what they want to do. They want to have like meetings in their calendars, interviewees in their calendar and do them. So yeah. that being said, I charge them like 1.5k a month. We uh we could make the meetings for them. We could um give them information on a monthly basis or bi-monthly basis, some sort of community that would 
possibly be a bit more aligned. And just to further down on, on that road and, and give a bit more thoughts to that, me, when I picture franchises, I, I can't help but picture um, McDonald's, Subway, you know, like all these fast food chains, I think they've applied yeah. the franchise model really well and at scale. What yeah. is the McDonald model to help me think on how I could build mine if it's even relevant? Um, they you, you need to pay McDonald to open uh, your your franchise. Uh, then they take yep. like I think five percent of your bottom line. Um, yeah, royalty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, royalties. They uh, who pays for the real estate? Do they rent it? Can you tell me a bit more about like the classic franchisee model and include numbers in there? It's, I mean, it's, it varies around different franchises. So, you know, some franchises are brick and mortar, some are not, some are work from home. So it depends. McDonald ones. Yeah. And people don't know, there's like, I think about right now, over 3,500 franchises all over the country. And there's new concepts popping up every day. Um, I just heard of one recently that's like a pet cremation franchise, you know, not not a fun thing to talk about for people that love pets, but our pets do pass away at some point. So it's a new concept. It's out there. There's new ones popping up all the time. So people think of franchising as, oh, it's McDonald's or it's Burger King or it's Wendy's, but there's, there's so many different uh, avenues to go in franchising. Uh, there's technology franchises, there's home service franchises, there's consulting franchises, there's, there's tons out there. But to answer your question, I mean, it just depends on what's called the FDD, which is the franchise agreement that every franchisee basically has to agree to and sign. And in that document, there's going to be details of royalties, rent, you know, costs, hard costs, marketing costs, and all of that stuff. So it just varies based on the franchise you're looking at and what they're doing. Um, so that, you know, that would vary when it comes to that. Yeah. Okay. Hey, but um, I mean, yeah, the pet franchise shirt, like we know that, but what's the model? Um, let's say that, uh, let's say the pet uh, cremation one. So yeah. I drop cash on them. I become yep. a franchiser. Like what's that amount? 30 K. I don't exactly know what theirs is. Could be around that. Probably a little more. Yeah. Okay. Like, okay, let's call it 50 K. Yeah. Uh, they give me the brand, right? right? So now I can brand myself as a pet cremation co. Uh, yeah. They teach me everything from sales yep. to ops. So that's right. part of the, the initial cash. And right. then monthly they will send me information and or we will meet in a zoom meeting and or in a physical live training so yeah. that I, I can be constantly updated on how to sell more how to operate better how to increase margins right. and for in that exchange they get five percent is that like all the costs there is because if it's brick and mortar i also need to pay my rent and stuff right yeah Typically, that's all the cost there is, unless it's a different case where there is a there is other costs associated with other things, you know, that you have to pay for. But like I said, for one that's like a pet cremation, you know, I would assume it's probably mostly home office. So there's some less expense there. You don't need to have an actual office. You can work from home. Um, but I'm sure there's like equipment and, and things that have to be handled with that type of a brand so it just depends because every brand is different every brand has different requirements whether it's equipment costs marketing costs sales costs insurance whatever it is um but yeah i mean it's, you're you're in the you're, you're along the right lines there yeah i was about to make a bad joke that like you i would have to buy an oven and it's a from home <laughs> business that'd be pretty terrible um it's so, not good yeah not yeah good. the Five percent. Okay, so if we align that model uh, yeah. to the podcasting one, yep. my ten k is probably like, I mean, it's cool because it's lower than like fifty. But let's say that I could charge them way higher up front. Mm -hmm. uh, they could use my brand and so forth. My advantage, obviously, as a franchisor, is that yeah, the people can spread the word out there and that yep. can bring more clients and so forth. But it's always hard to become viral and so forth and a, a household name that yeah. being said okay 20k up front you can use the bot by brand and so forth we get yeah. on trainings every two to four weeks and um every time you close an agency client uh someone that you will build um a podcast campaign with i think i'd charge a bit more than five to ten percent because it's 
yeah, it's like there's not that much client. It's not like a B2C business in which there's way more. So I charge them, let's call it 10 to 15% and I'd make sure the training would be good. Is that like a better franchise model? Plus, obviously, I'd grant them the right to use all of my name and uh, the, I'd, I'd share everything with them, basically. Yeah. Yeah. No, that sounds like a good model. As long as you can create, as long as you, whatever you create for that cost is the values there, that the value is definitely there for them to pay it. Then absolutely. I think you're, you're in a good, good area. Again, I mean, I'm not, I'm not an expert in how to structure your franchise model. That's more of like, you know, I, I have people on our team that can help you with that. Um, I know attorneys, franchise attorneys that are good with that stuff. Um, I, I can tell you basically the sales and marketing side of franchising, but as far as structuring, it's a little bit different. Um, and it's hard to say, this is what you should charge and this is right. Cause it's, it's really hard to know until you get out there and test the market, I guess, and really figure out the value. Yeah. Right. The podcast, your podcast, where do you want to bring it? What are your objectives this year? I would like to just get, you know, more guests, uh, bigger guests, pro- possibly sponsorships. Um, I'm I'm still kind of new, I would say, because I'm only about 83 episodes, 83 or 84 episodes, and I'm not at 100, which to me, and if you know in podcasting, once you break 100 episodes, you're really getting your groove because it's, it's, it's not a, a lot of people start a podcast and they think they'll do three episodes and stop and that's it. To me, it's, it's a marathon. It's not a, you know, you got to keep at it. You got to be consistent. So ideally, I like to get some sponsorship. Uh, I'd like to get, you know, bigger guests, more, more popular guests, um, but also just create better content, more, more, more attractive content. I want to drive more interest, more, more listeners, um, get better stories out there, get more out of it and give people more through it too. So I think that's my ultimate goal there. Yeah. Hmm. Do you think podcast scales? Cause I'm me, the franchise model, another model I'm trying that doesn't have to do with franchises. I hire people to do the interviews for me. Mm-hmm. They use my brand. Theoretically, maybe they should pay. It's all about value, right? Because yeah. I mean, I may be testing constantly. It's also constantly about A-B testing. Can test the franchise model and so forth. The point is I have way too many frigging guests right now. Yeah. My calendar is like four weeks out. I have 15 per day. And I need to give that out to someone else. Mm -hmm. They can use my brand and they can pitch me. They can pitch Pod Pirate the intro and the outro. Um, I'm trying to think how I could like benefit a bit more from that. I mean, I want to be tested. I actually have a meeting with like one of my first interviewers uh, today. Uh, But yeah, for now, just spreading the word, talking Mm -hmm. about Pod Pirate getting me more clients, I guess. Um, that that would be the objective. But that where I was getting with that is it takes a lot of time. It's good for the brain. Uh, you mm-hmm. can learn a lot. You can connect with people. I don't think the connection will go away because my next step also would be to have Charles AIs conducting interviews. Mm-hmm. That would be somewhat risky. I, I would put these Charles AI with new folks that mm-hmm. have never been interviewed. Mm-hmm. I, I do think it could be under the radar or like... Um, win-win there because the Charles AI would probably ha- ask like seven on 10 questions while the real Charles is like probably nine is and about to hit 9.5 on 10 questions. Um, mm-hmm. What, what do you think about that model? Do you, and would you use a Ryan AI if you could have the choice? That's a tough question. I mean, I think in some capacities, AI w- would work and would be would be good. Maybe on a preliminary interview, kind of getting information. But I think at the heart of podcasting is is the emotional side, and we can only have that through actual human connection. So I feel like AI has a place in the process. I don't know if it would be 100% used everywhere. Um because I think at the core of podcasting, and you know this as well as I do, it's it's really just the emotion. It's getting the emotion out of the guest, the stories, and driving that through through the podcast. So um, I would say, yeah, there's a capacity for it in some areas, but not in everything, in my opinion, on that. Yeah. 
I think it could somewhat reproduce all my reactions and my emotions if you view as an LLM. An LLM basically completes all of your sentences, pretty much understand most of what you're telling to it, even mm -hmm. better than another human would. Um, it would just record like all of these calls, the text, you know, so it could do some work on the vocal side of things, on yep. the text side of things. And it would just try to guess how Charles would react with a bunch of data points you know and i think i'm at like 700 pods so far mm -hmm. so it has like huge hordes of data i think that could be doable but yeah yeah sometimes it might sound fake yeah. um the ai i do think that guests would be amused though they would not be discussed they would be amused most yeah. a lot of them would actually just want to try the charles ai so i have this client um He's in Switzerland. His name is Stefan and he runs Asia. Asia is, um, it's an avatar. It's an AI avatar. Uh, the AI part is not super advanced uh, from the reply side of things, right? And mm -hmm. we'd have to feed it lots of data, but the 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 visual human part is there. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm currently working with him to deploy it like a version of that and yeah, I think it'd be quite powerful it's, if I can uh, deploy it to my other podcasters, friends, and communities. Um, yeah, I'll certainly let you know if we can build a Orion a uh, virtual GPT. I want to ask you though, uh, last yeah. question. You're you had a bunch of cool folks on your podcast. You've listened yeah. to a bunch of business stories. Yeah, which ones were the best, and what did you learn? What insights did you get from listening to them? Oh gosh. I mean, I would have to say, cause I'm a music fan. Um, and I've had a couple of musicians on my podcast and, um, one of them I idolized as a kid. So uh, playing music as a kid, I, you know, I started playing bass guitar, guitar at 16 and then started playing bass guitar at 19. And so I met a lot of musicians through the podcast, which I'm so thankful for. Um, and one thing I learned is I think in music, and if anybody's a musician out there, you know, it's not easy to get any success in music, uh, period. Um, so one of my guests uh, had a band for about eight years before they blew up. So uh, almost a decade of grinding and not getting paid very much at all to finally get the the gold at the end of the rainbow. And one of the lessons I learned, I think, and not just in music, but in business is you got to be willing to, uh, struggle and suffer a while. Now I'm not saying everybody that happens to everybody. Some people, get successful really fast and I'm, I'm happy for them, them, but uh, it doesn't happen uh, for everybody. It's, it's, there's a lot of people out there that work their tails off for years and years and years before they finally get that big opportunity. Um, and that road is difficult. Uh, there's a lot of rejection, a lot of failure, a lot of self-loathing. Um, you're up and down emotionally. You're, you're, you're fighting with yourself, your own ambition, you're struggling, you want to give up. But the people that get over that I've learned through my podcast are the ones that really become truly successful and see the reward at the end. So, uh, so a lot of the, the, the musicians I've talked to have that ex exact experience, just the struggle. Um, I think I use music because I have that experience too. I was, I was a musician years ago and it, it was difficult. It was difficult practicing, playing, 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 and, and not really getting paid well for it, but just enjoying it because you love it. So I would say that would be one of the biggest lessons I learned through through my podcast with everybody I've talked to. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I see a lot of that also in podcasters, you know, yeah. like they do business podcasts, but they really do well with their true passions. Um, yeah. Me, sometimes it's talking about biohacking, health, and longevity. Yeah, I have some kind of passion for that. Um, yeah. Listening to Joe Rogan, it's have a laugh sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. make make these jokes. Like the one that I did today could have been a good joke if I would have phrased it right. Um, I need to learn these skills, you know, yeah. and laughing is pretty fun. It yeah. lightens the mood. And I mean, I, I still talk to a bunch of uh, high performance folks about cool topics like mental health and so forth. So yeah, really, really grateful for that. And yeah, the default state of life is hardship, you know, like yep. 
you can get over it you need, you can learn to enjoy the pain and yeah tough through the tough moments as well because sometimes it's whatever you do it's not going to be enjoyable especially if you're not feeling well uh, biochemically you know yeah so it's all about experimenting 100 times winning maybe three out yeah. of these hundreds of times and trying to multiply mag magnify these experiments and see right if you have if you're disfranchised you may not get success up until the or major success up until the franchise number 97 yeah and that right. takes a lot of hard will and you know like uh society sometimes it uh it punishes people that have uh i call them pig heads i'm a pig head myself you know I don't listen to a lot of folks. I was always that way when I was mm -hmm. younger. I would not listen to people, but ironically, these are the people that make it at the top, you know? Yeah. So you need to have that determination. You yep. need to not give a fuck about what others think about you right. and about how society constantly tries to go for easy and put you down and try right. to put you in the cookie cutter. So that's a really good lesson right there. Thank you for that, yeah. Brian. Um, yeah. Where can people find out more about you? Oh, gosh. Uh, you can go to LinkedIn. You can look up Ryan Arcarachi on LinkedIn. Obviously, you can look up business stories with Ryan Arcarachi. It's A-R-C-O-R-A-C-I. So if you just search Ryan Arcarachi, Google it, you'll find me, find the podcast, find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm working on a RyanArcarachi.com. I do have a website, but I, I'm working on building it more out now. So that'll be out soon. Um, but I'm just excited to, to meet people like you, great people like you. They're doing a lot with their lives. You're on the health kick. I love that. You know, anybody that's out there doing good things for themselves and for, for their community, it's always good. So yeah, I hope you can reach out to me and we can talk. It'd be good to meet everybody. And I am Charles Cormier, host of Sales Wisdom Podcast. If you want to start scale or be invited to a podcast, podbuyer.com. That was Ryan Arcorachi.